Morning everyone, you're not allowed to reply. Six months since we've last met here in the building. And the huge amount of water has literally gone under the bridge in the last six months. The world has changed. We do things differently. And I think as you look around the group who are gathered here, you can see we do things differently. Social distancing. I see a sea of masks. And there are people, no doubt, who would like to be here, but who are not able to be with us this morning. People who maybe got underlying health conditions. People who don't feel comfortable yet in mingling in crowds. So as a little experiment, um, I've got my phone here and I'm recording what I'm doing with the intention later on of putting a short video together so that we can put it on to the website for those who are not able to be with us this morning. I want to say a thank you to the many people who have been involved in the reopening of the church. It was far from simple. It wasn't simply a case of choosing a date and opening the doors. There was a lot of practical work involved. I can't name everybody individually, but they know who they are. And I want to say a thank you to everybody who has been involved in any way at all in helping the building being reopened this morning. It wouldn't be a service without some intimations, and I just have the one. Um, I've just been asked to say that, that normally at this time of year, we would be collecting um, shoe boxes for Blythe's for the Peel. Um, as you can understand, due to the practical difficulties involved in trying to do that, we won't be doing that this year. And secondly, during the service, there will be one or two videos played, um, and a couple of them are lockdown choirs, which became quite common during the lockdown period. Choirs gathering together in their own homes and the songs he put together. I'm not going to ask George Drummond or Session Clark, he's going to come up and just say a few words, George. Well, good morning, everyone. I just want to uh, thank everybody for coming on this morning. I just also want to, as we all said, have the opportunity to thank the hard work that's been put in the background to get the service uh, going this morning. We've had lots of discussions, lots of thoughts, lots of worry. Um, lots of worry because you can tell that if there was too many people coming, people were going to have to diplomatically try and push people back. But there's been a lot of work going on, and I need to say thanks to everyone. A couple of things about the uh, collection. The collection went all the way to the tile. Uh, the, the collection of Dr. Peter sitting on the back, if you were coming over in that row. And if you were coming to go to that row here, there is a, a collection there just as, as you go over there. Um, I would love to say uh, that on the way for tea and coffee, can't do that, I'm afraid. I'd also like to, to say that somebody booked something, unfortunately, that's not the case. And I don't think that will be the case for some weeks to come. But thanks again for coming this morning and I'll hand over and I'll let's hope they enjoy the show together. What about the film this morning? Thank you, George. No singing. We're not allowed to sing. Um, if I hear any faint mumblings behind the masks that get too loud, I'll be having a look with you. What we've got is a couple, we have got a couple of songs. The words are going to go up on um, the screen. Wes is going to play them as if we were singing them. So he's going to play all the way through. So please um, sit, listen, quiet mumble, sing into yourselves. And the first one is, it's the Stuart Townsend version of The Lord's My Shepherd.
and who has provided um, flowers. They're artificial flowers and they'll be up for a few weeks and then later on, and if we're still under the same restrictions, they will be replaced. So thank you to sign up for that. One thing I really shouldn't say is a bit of a hostage to fortune is that this service is going to be shorter than normal and then I get to the end of the service and it's exactly the same length of time as normal. So I'm going to say at the moment that it's anticipated that it should be slightly shorter. I'm well aware of the fact that you have no pew cushions. <laughs> We're still living in the midst of a global pandemic. We know that. And although we might welcome this morning a return to worship, I believe we must first of all take a moment, a moment to remember. In response to COVID-19 and to everything that has happened over these past six months, and the many, not just in our own country but worldwide, who have suffered loss and whose lives will never be the same again, I believe we need to come in this moment as a time to remember. Our time begins with an ancient text. And after we have read the words of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I will light a single candle. If we go to the next slide, Jim. Listen to the words of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a right time for everything. There's an opportune time to do things. A right time for everything on earth. A right time for birth and another for death. A right time to plant and another to reap. A right time to kill and another to heal. A right time to destroy and another to construct. There's a right time to cry and another to laugh. A right time to lament and another to cheer. A right time to make love and another to abstain. A time to embrace and another to part. A time to search and another to count your losses. A right time to hold on and another to let go. A right time to rip out and another to mend. A time to shut up and another to speak up. A right time to love and another to hate. A right time to wage war and another to make peace. But in the end, does it really make a difference what anyone does? I've had a good look at what God has given us to do. Busy work, mostly. True. God made everything beautiful in itself and in its time. But he's left us in the dark. So we can never know what God is up to. Whether he's coming or going. I've decided that there's nothing better to do than to go ahead and have a good time and get the most that we can out of life. That's it. Eat, drink and make the most of your job. That is God's gift. I've also concluded that whatever God does, that's the way it's going to be. Always. No addition, no subtraction. God's done it and that's it. That's so we'll quit asking questions and simply worship in holy fear. Whatever was, is. Whatever will be, is. That's how it always is with God. So we light this candle.
We light this candle in memory of those who have lost their lives and are still losing their lives to COVID-19. We remember the bereaved and those still coming to terms with the death of a loved one. We remember today those still living with ongoing COVID side effects. To God we bring lost opportunities, lost employment, months of isolation, feelings of loneliness, and moments of fear and worry for the future. In our prayer and in our thoughts, we ask this. Lord God, place your healing hand upon all those who are in pain. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask, light of the world, give peace to those who are anxious and worried. Spirit of the living God, be with all who feel that there is no one else. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus said, Jesus addressed them, I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in the darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. There will be a moment of silence, and after that moment of silence, we will watch the first short video, a moment of silence. Anxious about whether, in fact, 
after the furlough period is over, whether they would have a job to go back to. Families living in flats, with small children, with no space to call their own. No escape from domestic abuse. NHS staff saving and losing patients in COVID wards. We've seen the pictures, we've heard the stories. For many of these past six months have been a time of loss. And I believe it is right that at this moment, as we return to worship, that we look back and we remember. So here we are once again, once again allowed to worship in this place, in all looks and all sounds so different. Look around, we are spaced out, we are wearing masks, we can't sing, you're directed to a seat. Life and worship are just so different. And many, as I said earlier, are missing. People who would like to have been here, but know for health reasons they shouldn't really be. So they haven't come. This morning I want to reflect, and it's literally just for a moment, about time. Six months have passed. No matter how much we come to understand time, or indeed the way we structure our lives around it, and we do that all the time, we cannot live literally without time. The one thing is, we are never in control of it. Age, as we know, will always catch up with us. We cannot keep it back. And as time moves on, it can seem to us that we are, in a sense, powerless. It's the image of a ship tossed around on the waves, the waves of something that are far bigger than we are. We can feel powerless against the forces of time. In Ecclesiastes, the writer says this, God says to us, there is a time and a place for everything. Now in times like these, I don't know about you, I find that hard to understand. There is a time and a place for everything. Pandemics are actually part of the cycle of life. George sent an email, not that long ago, saying 101 years ago there was the pandemic of Spanish flu. And do you know what happened 101 years ago? Buildings, public buildings, were shut. And there were pictures of people wearing masks. History, time, they repeat themselves. It is our hope that this time, with the advances of modern medicine, the death toll will be greatly reduced from 101 years ago. I was thinking nature can be cruel. We see that in the animal kingdom. The cycle of life, survival of the fittest. Just a week or so ago, I was sitting in the study and there was this almighty bang. I thought, that's another pigeon killed itself trying to fly. So I thought, I'm going to look. So, just out of the study, I had to look down and there, yes, uh, was a pigeon with a sparrow hawk sitting on top of it. Went to get the camera, I managed to get a picture of it, and then it just grabbed the whole bird to the away. The animal kingdom can seem very cruel. And at this moment, I think we are in the midst of the ebb and the flow of life. It has always been so. But this virus challenges who we are and our place in the world. We, that is humanity, looks at all the progress that we have made down through the centuries and all of a sudden that progress is put in perspective by a virus. 
We are not traitors. We are part, as the animal kingdom is, we are part of the created. And life will always have its shades of light and darkness. And in our experience, we know that to be true. If we have no control over time of what happens to us, there is still a promise. And the promise is this, God is in control. Now sometimes, depending on what has happened to us, we find that hard to believe. God says to us, you are more than ships tossed in the ocean. And if you are buffeted by loss, if you are buffeted by what happens to you in life, if we find ourselves even in the darkest of places, then even there, God is still light. We might not see it, but that does not mean that the promise is not true. We've all been through the dark moments, but we are here to say God is light. Shining into the moments of our lives we do not yet even understand. And when we look ahead into the unknown future, we believe Christ guides our stumbling footsteps and offers us a faith for today and a hope for tomorrow. We're going to put up the words of our next um, hymn, the well-known words, Be Thou My Vision, and please stay seated, mumble quietly, and Wes is going to lead us.
Before we move into time of prayer, I'm going to ask Jim to play the next short video. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Father God, be with us all as we meet together here in this place and at home. Be with us and guide our stumbling footsteps with faith and with hope this day and always. Amen. It is our intention and we are looking into what is called live streaming the service 
which would mean that it would go live on the internet at the same time it is happening in the building. We don't have the technology to do that at the moment, but we're looking into it. And that would certainly help for those who are not able to be with us on a Sunday morning. So bear with us as we are working on some new technology. To close the service, there will be a blessing, which is going to be our final um, video. And this was put together by different churches, mainly down in England. And it is our blessing, and it's simply entitled, The Blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord turn his face toward you and keep you. Turn his face toward